All right, we have a new model from OpenAI, GPT-40 Mini, and this is a really impressive model. So it's cheap, fast, and it is very intelligent. If we just plot it against some of the competitors that's within the ballpark of where they're positioning GPT-40 Mini, this model really competes with Gemini Flash as well as Claude Haiku, and there's a number of reasons for that. The size, the speed, but possibly most notably is the multimodal capability. Now, while there are some open source models out there, there aren't really any open source multimodal models out there right now that stack up against GPT-40 Mini, Gemini Flash, or Claude Haiku right now. I'll go over the blog post in just a moment, but in terms of the pricing for the model, this model is 30 times cheaper than GD4 O. The other thing with this model is it is significantly cheaper than even GPT 3.5 Turbo. It's 15 cents per million tokens of input, 60 cents per million tokens of output. When you compare that to GPT 3.5 Turbo, it's 50 cents per million tokens of input and $1.50 per million tokens of output. Really considerably cheaper across the board, and mind you, this also has the vision capability built right into the model. So I wanted to pull up this chart that I saw from Artificial Analysis, which is a really great account to follow, where they benchmark a ton of different LLMs across a number of different metrics, as well as different providers. And you can see in this chart is plotting the MMLU, so you can think of that as the intelligence of the model across the price of the model and it really stands in a category of its own. But you can see that it's cheaper than Gemini 1.5 Flash, as well as Claude 3 Haiku, and then it has a significant bump in that MMLU score like we had already talked about. That's another thing to consider when you're choosing a model is whether you'll need that multimodal input like images and what have you. On the multimodal note, if we hop back to the blog post here, what's exciting is that as of today, it supports text and vision within the API but there are plans to support text, image, video, and audio input in the future. So we don't know exactly when, but I think when this happens, this is going to be a really big shift on choosing models where all of a sudden you don't need to stitch together all of these different services. Like you might not need Whisper, you might not need a separate vision model or a text model. You can just pass in all of your input and be able to get the response that you're looking for. So I'd imagine over the next six months or so, we'll start to see more multimodal models that are full featured and don't just have those two modalities and that really have a plethora of different modalities and mediums that you can pass in and get responses from. The other thing to note with this model is it does have a token context window of up to 128,000 and the training data is up to October, 2023. The other thing that I wanted to point out with this model is how it ranked within the arena where you can go to this chatbot arena on this website here. And essentially what people do is you can put in your query and you will choose your response from these two models that stream out side by side. And what's interesting with this is that this model even outperformed Claude 3 Opus, which was the flagship model just a number of months ago. This just goes to show you how competitive all of this space is right now. We're starting to see all of this leapfrogging between Google, Anthropic, and OpenAI, as well as some notable open source competitors like Llama 3, as well as other models that we're seeing like Quinn and Neve that have really strong performance as well. This has preferred responses across almost 7,000 votes that really ranks up there with these flagship models. And the thing to keep in mind with all of this is we still have GPT-5 on the horizon. So presumably that's all trained and getting ready and potentially that could be released at any time. So maybe later in the summer and all, we don't know yet, but that's a thing to consider is this isn't really even at the forefront of what's going to be soon available to all of us. But it goes without saying that this is going to be a really popular option, I think, for a ton of different applications, just in terms of the cost and performance alone. This is a model that's geared at a number of different model calls, whether it's with Langchain or Langgraph, it's not just one sort of simple text in text out response. There might be a graph or sort of a cognitive architecture as Harrison Chase puts it, where you'll have this application that will go in and do a number of different inference calls depending on where it is within the application and what it's being asked to do. This model is really geared to those types of applications, though it can definitely be used in a conversation sort of history scenario or say if you're passing in that whole history and context of a conversation, this is going to be a way that is really cost effective as well as getting some good results in terms of the responses back and the quality of the model overall. The MMLU is always the flagship metric for these models when they come out. You'll always see the MMLU as the first benchmark for these models, which is the general intelligence of the model. And you can see that it really outperforms pretty much across the board 
And the wide margin is really from GPT 3.5 Turbo to GPT 4.0 Mini, in my opinion, because this is really the model that they're aiming to replace on their platform. It's not going to happen overnight, but arguably you can switch to this model and your application will be considerably better and cheaper overnight. You don't need to look to another provider, all of that. You can just change that model string and you'll be off to the races and even have new capability like being able to use images without too much extra effort. I wanted to point out, since I often do focus on coding on the channel, is that the eval score, which is the coding benchmark, did score 87% with this model. When you compare that to Gemini Flash or Claude Haiku, it is respectively 71.5% or 75.9% for Claude Haiku. With that being said, I wanted to test it out on how it performs on creating artifacts, which was popularized in the Claude interface here. While I'm here, I'm just going to show my quick input here. I'm going to say, give me the following, an SVG of a smiley face, a React signup form, a mermaid org chart of a tech company, HTML, CSS, JS game of Flappy Bird, and finally a React counter application. Let's just submit that and let's see what this model does. We see it streaming out in real time here. We see that it's created our SVG for us. It created a signup form component. It's going through all of this very quickly and let's just see how it did. We have our React component of a simple counter here so you can see all of the code. We have our Flappy Bird game here. It's definitely got a little ways to go, but it's a starting point. And if we go over to the tech company org chart, we see that we have that as well. We see that it's able to create a signup form and we see that we're able to have a smiley face. So one, this really cheap model is able to do all of that. Right off the bat, in terms of the work that I do, this is definitely gonna be a model that I'm gonna be leveraging in some of my upcoming applications that I'm building out for everyone. Just to go through a couple other things within the blog post, they mentioned that they partnered with some companies like Ramp and Superhuman, which both found that GPT-4.0 Mini performed significantly better than GPT-3.5 Turbo for tasks such as extracting structured data from receipts, or generating high quality email responses when provided with thread history. There's of course, almost at this point, the obligatory built-in safety measures that you can expect from OpenAI, Google, as well as Anthropic whenever they release a model. There's always some good information that you can read up on the safety practices that they've implemented within the model. And then in terms of the availability and pricing, it is available now from the completions API as well as the batch API. And they're even gonna be rolling out fine tuning for GPT-4.0 Mini in the coming days. In terms of ChatGPT, this is gonna be available on their free plus and team tiers where you'll be able to access GPT-4.0 Mini starting today. I just checked before recording this video. I didn't quite see it yet. If you have access, let me know within the comments. Let me know your experience, what you think of the model. I'd really be interested to hear. Another thing I love that they highlight within the blog post is that the cost per token of GPT-4.0 Mini has dropped 99% from Text DaVinci 3, which came out just two years ago. They talk about that they're committed to continuing this trajectory of driving costs down while enhancing model capabilities. This is going to unlock a ton of new use cases. I'm excited to play around with this. But that's pretty much it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.